Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we're doing a really cool fusion idea that I got from Jess Jack Daw. So Jess does this really cool series over on their channel where they have two different lists. One is all the Pokemon, and one is a bunch of Dungeons and Dragons monsters. They roll 2d10 dice to see which from both categories they have to pick and then mash together. I thought this was such a fun idea, and so I grabbed that list and I rolled some dice myself to see what I would get for my fusion. Okay, so I have the full list here and a little bit of a dice roller here on my phone. So basically we're going to do green dice is the first number, purple dice is the second number, and first we're gonna go ahead and pick the Pokemon. So let's go ahead and roll. All right, we got 71. Okay, 71 on the Pokemon chart was Bayonet. Okay, so we got Bayonet for our first choice. And then let's go ahead and roll for the D&D monster, which is going to be 08. Okay, so then that's a star spawn. So we have a star spawn plus a bayonet. I think this is gonna be super creepy, just based off of star spawns are just a bunch of crazy worms, and then a bayonet is just this weird, creepy little puppet-like looking thing. So this is gonna be fun to mash. So let's go ahead and jump in and get some sketches going, and let's go ahead and mash Pokemon and D&D monsters. So let's jump in and start sketching this atrocity because I already knew this was going to be a really creepy monster. As soon as I saw Star Spawn, I was like, oh man, it is game over. Those things are like, they're, they're cool, like how they're rendered in the monster manual. But if you like really break down what they actually are, which is just a bunch of like worms that are shaped like a human in these like clothes and this mask, I'm like, this is a really good start to something that could be really creepy and cool. So my thought process on this one was basically I'm going to take the overall shape of the bayonet and make it just a really creepy puppet. Like, looks like it's really breaking down, like the cloth is old and ragged and has patches on it. And then I wanted to also use the mask aspect from the Star Spawn illustration and just convert it to more of the bayonet face. I also love the idea of how the bayonet's smile is like this weird zipper and I wanted it to be opened and showing off all the like crazy worms inside. And uh, I was really also super excited to just make an arm and legs of just like worms, just a bunch of crazy wriggling things back and forth to make up the overall shape of its limbs. I thought that was gonna be really cool. And then I wanted to add like a really long, crazy tail to this as well, also made out of worms. At least that was like my thought process. At first I was thinking of making it very similar to how the bayonet tail looks or kind of just giving it a long whispering, 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 wow, I can't say the word. Wisping robe? No, that doesn't sound right either. Either way, I decided to just go for this much longer, uh, rat-like tail with a spike at the end, similar to the uh, bayonet tail. I actually don't know, I'm trying to find, I don't have the illustration open while I'm doing this uh, voiceover, but I don't remember if I actually add the spikes at the end. I think I might've forgot about them. We'll find out at the end of this video. <laughs> But yeah, it was time to jump in and do line art. And I really like the line art phase for when you're drawing more creepy monsters because that's the time where you can add those really uncomfortable extra shading details. Like I really like how that mask looks, like the, the hatching on it to make it look very worn and adding a nice shading aspect I think looks super cool. And then just giving this an overall creepy vibe by adding that extra shadow to it because of the cross hatching. You can also use that method on like the different parts of cloth to just add some cool texturing to it. And I just had a lot of fun just making this very patchwork looking costume for it. And it looks like um, at first I was trying to figure out where to put the lines for the arms and whatnot. Um, and I was trying to wrap my mind around how to do the worms along with my illustration. So I decided to make them a different layer and add a couple of different effects to them to just give it a really cool, creepy look. And uh, it was just so much easier to draw the underlying cloth uh, layer first and get that all together and then do a separate layer for the worms by themselves. 
So with the first chunk done, it was time to drop in a base color so I could start coloring the overall creature. And I started with the gray that was from the bayonet, but then I wanted to keep layering some different colors from the original Star Spawn illustration, like those reds and yellows. So I had that in mind, but I guess before that, I jumped in and started the worms. So I did a couple of different colors. Um, I wanted to kind of show highlights and shadows amongst the worms. I didn't want it to just be like one color. So I did a couple of different layers of different colors of these little squealies everywhere. And I think this method worked pretty well. I haven't really drawn a swarm of worms before. So I have to say this is like my first time trying anything similar to this. But I, I think this method worked pretty dang well, like just giving it these weird little wriggly things in different colors and layers. And it kind of shows the highlights and the differentiation in the fingers and the layering and that. So I think it worked really well, even though this is the first time I've done this type of method for like coloring worm-like things. So I feel the worms was probably one of the things that took the longest in this illustration. I probably could have made a custom brush to help me get those squiggles down a little bit faster, but it just became so very therapeutic just to kind of tune out and just do these squiggles over and over and over. I think I've said this many times before in previous videos, but it's really fun to just find some type of repetitive thing to do in my art and just kind of tune out and just draw it over and over and over. It's just like a nice time to like zen out and just do this same shape over and over. It's it's really fun. I don't know why I like it so much, but it's just very uh, therapeutic, like I said. So we got the arms and legs and the tail laid down. Now all that was left was to show the worms just bursting out of the open zippered mouth, which I really like how that kind of tied everything together. It's just so creepy to think about this thing just being filled with these crazy worms and it's just like busting out of its mouth. And uh, I just think it's so cool. And I love the idea of this, just this puppet carcass being controlled by these crazy worms on the inside. I love the idea. It's so creepy and so perfect. So now it was time to go in and lay the colors down that were based off of both the bayonet and the star spawn and start wrapping up this piece. This was really a great part of the piece because I could slowly see all the colors coming together and I was able to experiment with like kind of altering some of the original colors. I could have taken the exact same look from either of them in terms of like the same tone or the same look, but I was like, you know, let's just like make it like extra creepy and kind of look dirty and like darker. And oh, this was like my favorite part, just wrapping this whole thing up. And here I picked a couple of different colors from the star spawn to start dropping into the uh, ragged, I guess, rags that cover this creature. And then I started layering on some different uh, splotches to make it look like it was more dirty and started adding the shading and it's slowly coming together and we're almost done to the final piece and I absolutely love it. I think it looks really creepy and cool. I think this would be a really fun one to have as a monster. And I have a question for you guys. I'm thinking about doing a new Patreon tier or changing one of my current ones to doing like 
a monster of the month. Basically what you guys would do is subscribe for maybe like five bucks a month and you would get a brand new monster every month that has all the D&D stats, like it would have um, the lore and the art and uh, the attacks, everything you would need once a month for five bucks you'd get a new monster that you could drop into your games. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, go ahead and leave your response in the poll right here. And let me know, would you guys be interested in if I did something like that? Like if I made um, basically a, a monster of the month for you guys to participate in. So from here, I'm gonna jump in and finish off the rest of the shading and then we will be done. All right, guys, so there we have it. We have the Bayonet and Star Spawn mash, and I love this. It's so creepy, and it looks really cool. It's just like this decomposing, like, puppet sack thing with this crazy mask, and then it's just filled with all these weird, gross worms. This is super cool, but it also is, like, very uncomfortable looking. It just looks like it's, like, choking on the worms inside it, and it's just, uh, it's so cool. I love it so much but this for sure would be really creepy to come across in any type of dungeon or like maybe like a haunted house setting for a D&D game. That'd be super cool. This would be a great monster to go against in that type of scenario. It'd be so, so cool. So I would love to hear if you guys like this. I had a blast doing that. And thank you, Jess, for posting your lists. This was a really fun activity and I would love to do more of these in the future. So thanks again guys so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And if you aren't already, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. I make new videos every week, including monster mashes and I have my 100 dragon challenge and I got a lot going. So I'd love if you joined our little community. So thanks again guys for stopping by and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody.